Okay, so we're diving into some uh, pretty heavy stuff with this listener request. Yeah. They want to know more about the connection between autism and uh, this thing called smear campaigns. Okay. Apparently, it often involves um, narcissists. Oh, right. The main source they sent is this website about cheap ABA. Hmm. And on the surface, it's you know really practical, helping autistic people find affordable therapy and all that. Yeah, that makes sense. But then there's this one article that uh, really stood out, mm. and it talks about these like really tricky social situations. Oh, okay. Situations that you know autistic folks might be especially vulnerable to. I see. So to kind of kick things off, could you maybe break down what exactly a smear campaign is? Sure. And um, why it might be especially risky for someone on the spectrum. So a smear campaign is basically like a um, a deliberate attack on someone's reputation. Oh. It's not just like, you know, someone bad mouthing you or anything. Right. It's more like a systematic attempt to really damage your credibility. Wow. To paint this like really negative picture of you. Oh. And what's really important here is the intent behind it. Oh, I see. It's not just a casual disagreement or someone venting. Oh. It's about control and manipulation. Hmm. That makes sense. And I'm guessing that's where uh, the narcissist part comes in, right? Exactly. Like why narcissists would use this kind of tactic. Yeah. So narcissists often use smear campaigns to uh, to kind of maintain power. Okay. And avoid taking any responsibility for their actions. Right. So they'll, you know, twist situations, spread rumors. Right. And even go as far as manipulating other people. Seriously. Yeah, into believing their made up story. That's a that's pretty unsettling. It is. And it makes me wonder about like the specific things that make autistic people more vulnerable in these situations. Mm -hmm. The article mentioned something about um challenges with reading social cues. Right. So could that make it harder to see what's really going on early on? Absolutely. Like you wouldn't even know what was happening. Yeah. Imagine like trying to navigate this social landscape, right? Where mm. all the signs and signals are constantly changing. Oh, wow. And being distorted. Yikes. That's kind of what it can be like for someone on the spectrum dealing with um, a narcissist. Especially one who's like deliberately messing with things. Exactly. They're playing mind games. Ugh. That's awful. Yeah. And I'm also thinking about, you know, the trusting nature that many autistic people have. Right. And that desire to please others. Mm -hmm. It seems like that could really play into the narcissist's hands, too. You're exactly right. Like they see that and just take advantage of it. That inherent honesty and that genuine desire to connect. Yeah. That many autistic individuals have. Uh -huh. It can make them more likely to believe the narcissist's initial story. Oh, I see. Even if it's completely made up. So they fall for it, basically. Yeah. And that trust, and unfortunately, it can be exploited. So they're almost set up to be disbelieved from the get-go. It's like... Even if they're the ones telling the truth. Mm -hmm. The article actually gave an example of how someone's... Um, online activity could be twisted. Oh, really? To make them look bad, which was pretty eye-opening, to say the least. That's a really important point, because we often think of smear campaigns as, you know, happening in person. Yeah, like through gossip and stuff. Exactly. But the internet gives a whole new platform for this kind of manipulation. Oh, right. And it can be especially hard for autistic people to navigate that. So what are some things that someone can do to protect themselves if they're in that situation? Okay, so first and foremost, be mindful of what you're doing online. Like your social media and stuff? Exactly. Like, take advantage of privacy settings, you know. Okay. Think carefully about what you share publicly. Yeah, because anything you post could be used against you. Exactly. Especially if someone's trying to manipulate you. So it's like, you have to be extra cautious online. Just in case, yeah. Just in case you run into someone who might twist your words or your actions. Exactly. And this might feel a little um, uncomfortable. Oh, but documentation is, like, super important. It is. If you think you're being targeted, start keeping track of everything. Mm -hmm. Like, save emails and text messages. Yes. And even, like, write down notes about conversations. Right. It sounds excessive, but... It can really help. Yeah. Having that proof could be crucial if things escalate. It could be the thing that saves you. It's sad that we even have to think about this. I know. It's not fair. But it feels like that's the reality sometimes. Unfortunately. Yeah. And speaking of support, 
The article also talked about the importance of having a strong network. Yes. Like people you can trust. That's crucial. Because building that supportive community is like really important in these situations, right? Absolutely. It's about having people who can validate your experiences mm -hmm. and just listen to you. Yeah. And help you um, counter that negative narrative. Right. The one the narcissist is pushing. Yeah, exactly. That can be incredibly empowering. It can be the thing that gets you through. Especially since... You know, narcissists often try to isolate their victims. Yeah, absolutely. They want to control the narrative, be the only source of information. Yeah, they thrive on chaos. Right, and confusion. It makes it harder for their target to get support. So messed up. That's why those <laughs> connections are so important. It's about breaking free from that isolation. Yes. And reclaiming your voice. It's like having that solid ground mm -hmm. when everything else feels shaky. A safe haven. Exactly. And you know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. This whole article... Being on a website about cheap ABA. Yeah. It says a lot about what they're trying to do. I think so too. It seems like they're taking this like really well-rounded approach. That's holistic, right? Yeah. To supporting autistic individuals. Like they get that navigating the social world can be really tough. And it's not just about therapy and resources. It... It's also about like addressing these difficult social dynamics. Things that can have a real impact on people's lives. I'm a little curious though. About what? The article doesn't really explain what ABA therapy is. Oh, friend. Do you mind giving us a quick rundown? Um, sure. ABA stands for Applied Behavior Analysis. Okay. And it's this type of therapy that's often used to help um, autistic people. To do what? To develop skills and adapt to different situations. Oh, interesting. It's based on breaking down complicated behaviors into smaller steps mm -hmm. and then using positive reinforcement to, like, encourage learning and positive change. So this website is essentially giving people resources. Yeah. And support for finding affordable ABA therapy. That's right. And by including this article about smear campaigns, mm -hmm. it's, it seems like they're acknowledging these broader social challenges too. Definitely. Not just focusing on individual skills. You're looking at the big picture. Right. It's a really holistic approach. For sure. In case we wonder what other resources they might have on there. Me too. Maybe we can check it out later. Yeah, we sure. But before we move on. Yeah. I'm curious to hear what stood out to you the most about online activity and smear campaigns. Oh, that's a good question. Like what really struck you? You know, I think what got to me was the idea that for someone on the spectrum, yeah, their online activity, which could be totally innocent, right. could be so easily taken out of context yeah. by someone who wants to hurt them. That's scary. It's like a whole other layer of vulnerability. In a world that's already like super complex for them. Exactly. That's a really good point. It highlights the need for more awareness. For sure. And understanding. Not just within the autistic community. All right, like everyone needs to get it. Yeah, everyone who uses the internet. It's like a reminder to be more mindful of how our words and actions can affect others. Absolutely. Especially when we're interacting with people who might experience the world differently than us. It's about promoting empathy online. Yeah. We need to be more critical of the information we see mm -hmm. and not just jump to conclusions. Right. Based on like a few snippets of someone's online persona. Exactly. It's like remembering there's a human being behind every profile picture. That's it. And that what we do online. Yeah. Can have real world consequences. Absolutely. Both good and bad. Well said. I think that leads perfectly into our next topic. Which is? The psychological impact of smear campaigns. Ah, yes. Especially on autistic individuals. Okay. We can dive deeper into that in the next part of our deep dive. Sounds good. Okay, so we've <laughs> talked about how these smear campaigns actually work. All right. And why they can be, you know, especially damaging to people on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. But I kind of want to dig a little deeper into the actual, like, psychological impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine being constantly bombarded with all this negativity. That's why. Having your character attacked. Feeling like you can't even speak up for yourself. It can be really devastating. For anyone, that would be stressful and demoralizing. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. But for someone on the spectrum. Yeah. Who might already be dealing with, like, social anxieties. Right. Or being really sensitive to criticism. Mm. I mean, it could be absolutely debilitating. It really could. Yeah, it's like adding insult to injury, you know? It is. It's like... The article mentioned something about autistic people being um, yeah. particularly sensitive to feedback and criticism. Oh, right. Can you talk about that a bit more? Well, 
Many autistic individuals, they experience the world in a really intense way. Okay. And very literally. So like if someone says something. Yeah. They take it to heart. Exactly. Like even if it wasn't meant to be hurtful. Right. It can be felt really, really deeply. Wow. And personally. And I guess when that criticism is coming from. Yeah. Like a deliberate smear campaign. Right. Where it's intended to be malicious. Uh-huh. That impact just gets like amplified. Times 10. At least, yeah. So it's not just about feeling, like, hurt or upset. It's yeah. like yeah, your whole sense of self is being attacked. Exactly. That's it heavy. It shakes their confidence. Yeah. It makes them question everything. Like, even their own perceptions. Yeah. It can even make them withdraw from others. Leads to isolation, yeah. And that's why that support network we talked about. Yeah. It's so, so crucial. It really is. It gives them that buffer, you yeah. know. Right. Against all that negativity. And it helps them hold on to yeah. their sense of self-worth. You know, it also seems like professional help. Oh, yeah. Could play a big role here. Absolutely. Someone who understands both um, yeah. the nuances of autism mm-hmm. and how these, like, narcissistic dynamics work. Right. That could be incredibly valuable. I think a therapist who specializes in both of those areas, yeah. they can provide so much. Like what? Support, validation, yeah. nope. and even practical strategies. To help them cope. Exactly. For dealing with the emotional fallout. So it's not just about putting out fires. No. It's about giving them the tools to thrive in the long run. Exactly. It's about empowerment, not just damage control. That's a great way to put it. And speaking of empowerment. Yeah. I think it's worth going back to that cheap ABA website. Oh, yeah. Because even though the article is super heavy, Mm -hmm. the site itself seems really positive. It does, doesn't it? Like it's got a ton of resources. And support for autistic people. That's almost like a like a beacon of hope, you know? Yeah, I get that. In a world that can feel overwhelming sometimes. Yeah, like it's not all doom and gloom. Right, exactly. There's a lot of positive energy there. Can practical advice. And that's really encouraging, I think. It is. And it's a good reminder that, you know, right. smear campaigns are a serious issue. Mm-hmm. We need to be aware of them. Absolutely but they don't define the whole autistic experience. Right, it's just one piece. There's so much more to celebrate. And support. And this website, it feels like a testament to that. I agree. It's like they're saying, hey, we see you. We understand what you're going through. And we're here to help you. Exactly. And we're going to help you in a way that empowers you. That's a powerful message. It really is. It speaks to the power of community and shared experience. Like when we come together, Mm -hmm. share what we know. Yeah. And support each other. Mm-hmm. We could overcome anything. Even the toughest stuff. That's so true. And it's a good reminder that yeah. even yeah. even in the darkest times, mm. there's always hope. Always. And sometimes that hope comes from yeah. unexpected places. Like where? Like a website about affordable therapy. It's amazing how, yeah. how those little sparks of hope can show up when you least expect it. I love that. You know, it's funny, this whole conversation about, like, smear campaigns Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and being vulnerable online, Mm -hmm, it reminds me of something else. Of what? All the talk about misinformation. Oh, yeah. And media literacy. You know, that's an interesting connection. Right. They're kind of intertwined. We live in this world where we're just constantly bombarded with information. Oh, I know. And it can be so hard to figure out what's true, what's made up, and what's, like, intentionally manipulative right and that's not just an autistic thing no that's everyone we all need to be more critical don't we we do like we need to learn how to think critically about what we see yeah to navigate this information overload exactly we need to question things Mm -hmm. look at things from different perspectives okay and look for evidence especially when it comes to sensitive topics right like smear campaigns where things can get really emotional Mm -hmm. and you can easily get caught up in the drama What are some, like, tips people can use? For developing those critical thinking skills. Yeah, because it sounds crucial in today's world. Well, one of the most important things is be aware of your own biases. Okay. We all have our preconceived notions Mm. and beliefs, and it's so important to recognize how those biases might be affecting what we see and hear. So it's about taking a step back Mm -hmm. and asking yourself, am I being objective? Exactly. Or am I letting my emotions, like cloud my judgment it's about developing that self-awareness yeah and being willing to challenge your own assumptions okay what else another key strategy is seek out diverse perspectives oh interesting don't just rely on one source of information so like don't just 
get your news from one place. Exactly. Read articles from different places. Mm -hmm. Listen to podcasts with different viewpoints yeah. and talk to people yeah. who have different opinions than you. So basically, expand your horizons. Mm -hmm. Get out of your comfort zone. Exactly. Right. Okay. Embrace intellectual curiosity. Mm -hmm. Be open to learning from others. You know, it's important to remember. Right. Critical thinking isn't just about, like, yeah, poking holes in things mm -hmm. or debunking information. Right. It's also about recognizing yeah. when arguments are valid okay, <laughs> and appreciating nuance. That's a really good point. Right. Because issues can be complex. They can be. It's not always black and white. Exactly. It's not about being right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's about having a thoughtful conversation. And being respectful. Yeah. I think that mindset is so important online. It is. Especially for topics like smear campaigns. Where things can get, like really messy it's about looking at information carefully mm -hmm. with compassion mm -hmm. and a willingness to have real dialogue beautifully put mm -hmm. and i think that goes beyond just this deep dive i agree it's about how we interact with the world in general being more thoughtful yes more empathetic and more nuanced in our thinking well said speaking of nuances yeah i think it's time to switch gears a bit okay and talk about Something that's often misunderstood. Like what? Autism itself. Ah, okay. We should explore the spectrum, mm. debunk some myths, okay, and just shed some light on yeah. the incredible diversity and strength mm -hmm. within the autistic community. I like it. Let's do it. Okay, so we've talked about a lot. We have. But I want to make sure we cover one more thing. Okay. Autism itself. Yeah. You know, it's important to understand the spectrum. Right. And all the different ways... Uh, autism can present. Absolutely. Because it's not a, like, yeah. one-size-fits-all diagnosis. D definitely not. It really is a spectrum. Yeah. It encompasses so much. Like what? Different strengths, different challenges, okay. different ways of experiencing the world. And that's something that, um, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people just, like, don't get. I think you're right. They have this really narrow view mm -hmm. of what autism is. Or what it looks like. Exactly. Which can lead to a lot of yeah. Misunderstandings. Right. Misperceptions. It makes it harder for autistic people mm -hmm. to, like, navigate social situations yeah. and advocate for what they need. Absolutely. So how can we, like, move away from those stereotypes? Oh, that's a good question. And be more inclusive. Yeah. Well, one of the most important things is... Yeah. Listen to autistic people. Oh, yeah. Like, really listen to their experiences. Okay. Their insights their perspectives. Right, because they're the experts. Exactly. And there are so many autistic people sharing their stories. Where? Everywhere. Blogs, books, social media. Wow. There are all these advocacy organizations, too. So instead of assuming, mm -hmm. we should just let them tell us. Exactly. And when we listen yeah. with open hearts and minds, uh -huh. we can start to appreciate the diversity yeah. The neurodiversity. Within the autistic community. Yeah. It's like we learn about the unique strengths mm -hmm. and challenges. Right. That come with, you know, yeah. experiencing the world differently. And it's about celebrating those differences. Yes. Instead of trying to fit everyone into this yeah. little box. Right. Because that doesn't work. It doesn't. And, you know, another thing is oh. autism is not something that needs to be cured. Yeah. It's not a deficit. Okay. It's just a different way of being. Oh, I like that. A different way of thinking. Okay. A different way of interacting with the world. And those differences. Yeah. They can be really valuable. They can. And enriching. Exactly. So it's like yeah. shifting our perspective. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing autism as something that needs to be fixed. Right. We see it as a source of yeah. strength mm -hmm. and diversity. I think that shift is so important. Yeah. For creating a more inclusive society for everyone yeah not just autistic individuals yeah. when we embrace neurodiversity yeah we're embracing the idea that what there are many ways to be human mm -hmm. and all of them are valid and valuable exactly that's such a powerful message it is it makes me think about why we started this whole conversation oh yeah you know, with that cheap ABA website right we've talked about a lot of tough stuff we have like smear campaigns yeah Online yeah, I... vulnerability. But it's important to end on a on a positive note. I agree. A note of hope. Yeah. And empowerment. Because even though those challenges exist, mm. 
there are also resources out there. Absolutely. And support systems. And communities. Yeah, dedicated to helping autistic people thrive. And don't forget, yeah. there are so many autistic people out there mm -hmm. doing incredible things. Like what? Breaking down barriers. Okay. Advocating for change. Yeah. Inspiring others. With their resilience. Mm -hmm. Their creativity. And their unique perspectives. So, to our listener. Yeah. If any of this has resonated with you, mm -hmm. if you've been touched by these topics, yeah. know that you are not alone. There are people who understand. Yes. People who care. And people who are fighting right alongside you. For a more inclusive world. A more accepting world. And if you're feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. or discouraged yeah, yeah remember that there is help out there there are resources organizations websites communities yeah all dedicated to helping providing support guidance hope that cheap aba website yeah with all its resources and articles mm -hmm. it's just one example of the amazing support that's out there right it's a good reminder that even when things are tough yeah there are people working hard to make things better for autistic individuals I mean, they're families. I think that's a great place to wrap things up. It is. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Of course. We explored autism, mm -hmm. smear campaigns, yeah. and the power of community and support. So important. And listener. Yeah. Until next time. Stay curious. Stay informed. And stay connected. We'll see you then.